I can give you an example of what this vector and scalar potentials could do other than communication that would that would overlap into national security. For example, you could use this similar method to surveil a room without cameras. Interesting. Uh, you can use the potentials that exist all around us right now in the quantum vacuum to surveil an entire room. How would you do that? There are multiple ways to skin this cat. That's the thing. Everything we've been talking about, there are multiple ways to pursue this. However, I think whether it's barium titanate, whether it's yttrium barium copper oxide, there's a couple of uh, low temperature superconductors with high temperature combinations using voltage and acoustic resonance could in fact be able to transmit information that never decays. Um, that would, I, I don't mean for the record, I don't mean to speak for Dr. Pudoff, but I, I find his work absolutely fascinating. Yeah. His entire set of papers on his earth tech website is every is, uh, acted as a, a mentor type guide to me. Uh, yeah. there are things there that are revolutionary in a way that is like it, 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 it would break people's minds with regards to, wait, you're telling me that this type of approach can be taken and all of a sudden we get these effects that we're, that are considered beyond the pale uh, from a mainstream sense? How should we view this from a, because like from a pure like science and civilian sector, right. you know, you're telling me that you have these quantum comms that like don't decay over space time. You know, that, that seems like the way an advanced alien race would communicate. That seems like it would be this massive, exciting unlock for society. Absolutely. How do we view this from a national security perspective? Because I tried to get in touch with a guy named Lee Hively, right. who's, you know, working in extended electrodynamics and a friend that, uh, you know, helped yep. with facilitate that. Yep. You know, he got in trouble. Yep. Hively freaked out and was like, you know, you, shouldn't be shouldn't be reaching out to me and i think he put like the you know navy press or something on the thread the, yep and i was just like hey man i just wanted to have a conversation and 99 percent of you know my stuff is is offline right and i always say publicly if i'm told that for serious national security purposes i should stop covering a specific thing right. i will always do it right right and uh, anyway so the, but the, i usually don't get the door shut in my face but i did with highly well, i can give you an and example extended electrodynamics right, so. well i can give you an example of what this vector and scalar potentials could do other than communication that would that would overlap into national security for example you could use this similar method to surveil a room without cameras Interesting. Uh, you can use the potentials that exist all around us right now in the quantum vacuum to surveil an entire room. How would you do that? Um, that I can't get into, okay. unfortunately. But the but it is possible. It's very po if you can use use it for communication. Why not in other areas? And I I know for a fact it's it's possible. There were. I know a group that is working in the government that has been working on this since the nineties. And they've, wow. they've had massive success. It's it's not like an ongoing ish prototype. Yeah. It's been established. They're just working on multiple new versions of it. Do um, you think humans themselves, like, were like these hard drive avatars or something of something higher? Because I think about, you know, DNA uses binary code. So right. AGCT, you basically just have, you know, base pairs. You have two two combos. I'll so tell I think you of something. And zeros. I'll tell you something. I think of DNA, if if you want, that I, that is highly controversial. But yeah, tell me. I think there's a third strand to our DNA. I think that the two helixes that we're used to. I think there's a third one down the middle that exit that is physical, but exists at the Planck scale, and I think it's electrically conductive. How would that not dawn on like all these biologists and geneticists? You've interviewed like, someone who knows. Okay. I think I know who you're talking about. You've interviewed somebody who knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So initials GN. Or no, no comment. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Well, that's a, uh, that would be pretty fascinating. Um, and what would that mean implications wise? Well, it would mean that what we call junk DNA is not junk. First yeah. off, um, there but was- But junk DNA is prosaically understood by geneticists and biologists. The idea that there's a third strand, that would be controversial. Correct. And it's possible that third strand is, again, um, it may overlap with Luc Montagnier's DNA water teleportation aspect. Um, I don't claim to be an expert in that area. Uh, with that said, I do believe that there is something there. Um, I would go one step further and say that uh, there, there's, there is something there and- um, actually, you know what? I'll say it. There's a gentleman that was a, uh, um, a not not Dr. Gary Nolan, uh, but there's another gentleman that I can tell you the name of after and, and show you the evidence of in which 
Um, I wrote up a manuscript dealing with the third strand of DNA. This was a two or three years ago, and they were willing to help me put it in a peer-reviewed format to help it be reviewed in the more international li uh, literature. Unfortunately, that individual was r restrained uh, from being able to help me. And so biologics and, and the field of uh, medicine and, and DNA was not my area of focus. And so I kind of let that go. Uh, with that said, there was a gentleman, Peter Garyev. He was nominated for the Nobel Prize in 2019 or 2020. The nomination was retracted and he later died, I believe, under mysterious circumstances. He was using vector and scalar potentials through polarization methods to uh, heal people using sound and light. Wow. And he was, he has, it's, his, uh, I believe his wife still runs the website and it's still up. Um, I believe it's called... Uh, linguisticwavegenetics.com, I believe. Um, if you Google it, it's in Russian, but you can translate it. There is an English version of the website and you have all of his papers with all of his engineering methodologies. Um, and he was healing people inside of pyramids, uh, wooden, wooden pyramids Whoa. that were, and th this is not me. Uh, you want to know something trippy? You know, Brian Marescu is by any chance? I've heard the name. He's, um, he wrote a book called The Immortality Key. He's a really good guy. He's a buddy of mine. He texted me earlier today um because he's like man i've just been getting into the work of this guy constantine mile right and it explains a lot of my work around like you know scalar and vector potentials and its effect on the human body right I i've been interested in this for a while and it, it, it's it's interesting a lot of things seem to be convergent so so this guy was treating people with pyramids uh pyramids he was having them go inside these pyramids that were uh, the the frame was wooden However, he was using um, vector and scalar potentials using uh, uh, electronic circuits, lasers, semiconductors, and so on to create a field in which when the person was in that pyramid, uh, when they would, they're, again, controversial, but their, um, their ailments would be healed, whether it was depression or whether it was more of a physical ailment. I don't... Well, How long that work? Um, this goes again back to the polarization of of a lattice of a material. This goes back to the the notion of voltage with potentials. Um, the idea is that everything has memory. So, for example, my hand, although it's aging right now, the skin and everything, it's possible that you can actually uh, actually let me give you a, a a very basic example. So, think of a stack of ten books. Mm -hmm. for, now imagine we exist on book 10. We consider that as the present physical moment, if you yeah, will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's possible that the previous, let's say the previous books represent points in time that were previous in which your hand was at a younger stage. It's possible that you can use a polarizable vacuum approach to bring, say, book three up to book 10 presently and replace book 10 with book three. Meaning basically now your the skin is younger from a time pers a temporal perspective and the entire composition of the body is is a, of that body you've body, body part you've treated is now literally younger because of the negative and uh, ne negentropic time reversal aspect that you've you've now implemented using vacuum polarization using uh, uh, voltage and and photons and light and and so on. Interesting. Yeah. So biology does decay, I guess, via entropy. It 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 it, turn, it becomes more sort of yeah chaotically di you know almost uh, disassociates or something we 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 disincarnate over over a period of time and that's why we age or something. There was a study. Sorry to interrupt you. There yeah. was a study I believe in the seventies which um, basically showed that it, there was an observation in which a UAP was hovering near some plants. And as an individual approached the UAP, the UAP shot off, as many people have experienced. However. When the plants that were close to the UAP were analyzed, they had aged 10 years within wow. X amount of hours. Well, it's and in, it's, it's in, called senescence. So now, yeah, cell yeah. senescence. But I mean, yeah, I mean, that would be the conventional term. You go to right. Chernobyl, there's a study that came out, or not even a study, an article that came out like this month, I think, about these dogs at Chernobyl that have rapidly evolved more than any other dog. Think about it, right? Like, right. It's, it's easy. Like. Right. UV radiation promotes, you know, uh, genetic mutations or whatever, right, which, right. which is differential selection and, and that creates evolution, right. right? Right. And so if you were to grow a frog in a Faraday chamber, it would grow, you know, kind of messed up. And then right. if you were to grow it in a high radiation environment, it would grow, you know, grow too fast or right. whatever. And so right. yep. there's some sort of uh, equilibrium a la the Schumann resonance of the earth, this, this magnetosphere of the earth. 
that allows life to form. Right. And so I could see why a lot of this work would be pretty controversial because you're kind of messing with the soup that we're all well, swimming in. Well, you said Schumann resonance, right? Yeah. It's been argued that that is the uh, ar- uh, the heartbeat of the planet, so to speak. Yeah, and that, exactly. Yeah. Right. And that the reason on the surface that the frequencies are so low is because you'd have to get closer into the center of the earth for the frequency to get higher. What if it's possible that the vector and scalar communication potentials we were talking about Again, there are no electric or magnetic fields, purely toroidal geometries. And when I said acoustic resonance, what if that's the Schumann resonance that I'm that we're speaking of? What if the Schumann resonance can never uh, disappear, so to speak, mm. from a from a field or from an a, an a, a, an area? But E and B fields can, but that resonance never does mm. because it is part of a more core makeup of this reality. Wow, that's that it's. You, I think you're. I would argue very strongly you're talking about the same thing there. We're talking about acoustic resonance or Schumann resonance with regards to if you have a room like the room we're in now and we removed all E and B fields, yeah. and there, but there were still these resonant toroidal geometries, um, you can overlap RF radio frequencies with acoustic f- uh, fre- uh, frequencies. And so these toroidal geometries may in fact stem from uh, the Schumann resonance of the planet. <laughs> 